Hello guys, welcome to another Upgrade unboxing video. It's time for Upgrade 61. It arrived yesterday and I really can't wait to open it because I really enjoyed the last box and I hope they're keeping up the good work. So let's have a look inside. So we have some stickers on top and this looks like watercolor or ink, I guess. So I think that's what we're getting here. As I said in the last video, it's not that smart to put a picture of the artwork right on top so you know already what's inside, but whatever. So I guess we have liquid watercolor here and liquid acrylic paint, like fluid acrylic paint. That's interesting. And there's actually a swatch right on here. So it's a rather dark yellow. And I've never heard of that brand, but I guess it's Spanish or something. Yes, it's from Barcelona. So we have some Spanish art materials. Really nice. This is violet, this is turquoise. And what do we have here? A straw, a paper straw, I guess. Yes, that's paper. And an eyedropper tool, so that will come in handy. And last but not least, some paper. And it's Yupo paper. I've heard of that before. I guess it's what you use with inks. Acrylic inks, I guess. Very interesting. I don't want to wait. <laughs> Let's have a look inside of here. That's not exactly how I imagined it to feel like, but on the other hand, I really don't know what I was expecting, but it's very smooth and I don't know, it feels almost like some kind of plastic in a way. I don't know how to describe it. And I have actually no idea what Yupo paper is made of, I think. I need to Google that. But we got eight sheets and it's 300 sheets. So. And last but not least, we got the art print. I think this looks really nice and I feel like this is going to be a more experimental box, like abstract art and stuff. So let's find out what the topic is. So it says on the bottom post that this is actually a synthetic paper, so I wasn't too far off with saying it feels like plastic. And it's actually water resistant, which is actually quite logical. If you use inks on top, which are basically water and 100% liquid, it's nice to have paper that's water resistant, obviously. So now let's have a look at the topic and I hope this time it's the right one. Oh yes, I guess this will be the right one. It's Liquid Dreams. If you remember in the last bottle post there was a mistake. There were different topics like some people had this topic and some people had that topic and I was quite confused and didn't know which one's the right one, but I guess Liquid Dreams that Fits the materials quite well, so I think it's the right one. So I'm not really sure how to test the materials. I mean, I only have eight sheets here and I really want to use them for proper artworks and not only for swatching. So, so maybe I'll just test the materials on some other paper, which is not exactly representative, but 
at least I'll save one of the Yupo paper sheets. Oh, whatever. I'll just take this one and let's see what happens. So I just quickly want to talk about one thing and that's the how-to video. And if you don't know, there's always a how to use the art materials video in the digital border post. And usually it's just a time lapse of the artist doing things like painting, drawing or whatever, but without any explanation. And this time there is finally an artist who explains what she's doing and I really love that because sometimes it's actually really hard when working with new materials to just look at what someone else is doing without any further context. So really great that there's finally a proper video. And I think under this circumstances there's actually a benefit from the digital version of the bottle post. Before it was just like, okay fine, it's digital. But it didn't make anything better in my opinion. So I just quickly grabbed a jar of water and now Let's have a look at the watercolors. So you can actually squeeze out the paint here and maybe use this even for drawing. Or painting rather. That feels nice. That's so cool. I was actually expecting it to drip out of here, but... Actually, it's pretty amazing to use. So far, I like it. So this is turquoise. Now let's have a look at violet. This is also really pretty, however, I think the opening is broken. Yes, it is. Oh no. I mean, if you look at this opening, it's round and everything's fine. I hope you can see it. And then there is this one and I really don't know if you can see it. It's kind of, I don't know, it looks like like it dropped or something. I don't know, maybe I can fix it, maybe not. I'll just try my best and if not, I'll make it work anyway. I think this could make it better, however, it's still not as nice as the other one. I don't know if you can see it, but oh yeah, here. It's not very even. But it works a little better now. You can actually see it here that it's broken. But whatever. So let's add some water. And have fun. I'm actually a little scared to blow it all over my desk, so I'm a little careful here. So I think I'll add some water now with a brush, because the artist actually used a brush too. There's none included, but I don't care. I think it's really pretty, but the paint is pretty hard to control. So I think I'll blow it this way now. Interesting. Very interesting. Also, I'm thinking, since this is watercolor and this is acrylic, in the end, one part of the painting will be waterproof and one will not be waterproof, so that's also a very interesting combination. And now let's have a look at the acrylic paint. So let's squeeze some of that. Wow, that's that's liquid. That's so cool. Wow. 
Wow. So it's actually turning a little brownish, but anyhow, it's looking super satisfying when the paint drops in there. I think I'm going to have so much fun with this box. Let's drop in some more violet. Maybe a bit of water. So while I'm blowing, sometimes I think, okay, wow, this looks cool, but then I stop blowing and the paint comes back and it looks totally different. So I guess I can't really plan how to do my artwork this time. I think I'll just let it happen because, you know, the theme is not very restrictive. So I guess I can do whatever I want. Also, I'm wondering how long it will take for this to dry. I mean, it's basically a lot of water right here and pretty big puddle. So if you can't tell, I'm pretty fascinated by this technique and the materials and just everything. And I'm a little bit speechless right now because I just want to make art and just stop talking for a while. <laughs> Oops. Well, I should get some paper towels, I guess. So I gotta say, I was just swatching here, but I already love the results. So I'm very excited to see what it looks like when I'm actually working on an artwork. So it's one day later and the artwork looks like this. It's finally dry, even though it looks pretty wet over there. So I'm not gonna touch that because I'm a little scared to ruin it, but I really love how it looks. Also, I made a mess on the back. So let's start with the actual artwork. Honestly, I just couldn't wait to start painting again because it was so nice already when I was swatching the materials, so I was really happy to continue. Since I wasn't really able to control the paints, I felt super relaxed because I had no idea what the end result might look like and therefore there was basically zero pressure. It almost felt like back in the day as a kid when I was just painting away, no one had an idea what I was aiming for, including myself, yet I still felt like the greatest artist ever. And this playfulness is pretty hard to maintain as an adult, so I can't even put into words how much I enjoyed this painting session. I just tried to follow my intuition and used a brush and the eyedropper to create some water drops and then added the watercolors to it. And then I connected everything with even more drops and it all looked super cool already. Watching the colors flow into one another got me really relaxed. Actually, I was so relaxed that I added way too much water and the colors just mixed and turned dark blue. But that was no problem at all because I could just lift off the water with a paper towel. It was pretty hard to control the paint flow with a straw, but since I had no goal in mind, I just experimented a bit. Added some paint here and there and just kept going until I liked the result. When I reached this point, I realized it wasn't too smart to leave the paper attached to the paper pad because since the paint is fluid, I can't just lift the sheet without ruining the painting. I mean, look at this beautiful puddle of colors. There's no way to move it until it's fully dry. So let's make use of this situation and admire the colors for a second. As the paint dried, I noticed that it's not nearly as opaque and vibrant as I had expected. It looked really vibrant while it was wet, so I'm a little confused, but maybe that's due to the Yupa paper? Who knows? So let's do a quick ink blot test. What do you see here? I would really love to know what this painting looks like to you, so let me know in the comments. I really enjoyed the process, so I decided to start another painting right away and explore the materials a little more. I gotta say, I was really surprised to learn how well the fluid acrylic paint works with the liquid watercolors. I mean, usually I wouldn't think of combining watercolors and acrylics since one is waterproof and the other isn't, but I can definitely see where both is included here. 
They behave pretty differently, like the watercolors are basically water, so they are 100% liquid, easy to blow and will just flow everywhere and the colors mix right away. Whereas the acrylic paint is a little thicker and almost gives a bit of stability to the painting. I don't know how to describe it, it's a little easier to control, I would say. But nevertheless, I feel like the paint is doing its own thing here and I'm just sitting on the passenger seat watching what happens. And that's absolutely fine and I'm loving every second of it. The second painting is very different from the first one, but it was just as much fun as the first one. Again, what do you see here? I think there is so much room for interpretation. All in all, I gotta say, this box was fantastic and super relaxing. I've really missed this feeling of excitement lately when working with the upgrade supplies, but this box just made me happy. And I can absolutely understand if there are people who don't like it, because admittedly, working with the Yupo paper feels really weird in the beginning, but I'm starting to like it. From a financial point of view, it's debatable if it's good value for money or not, I found the watercolors for 250 to 3 euro each on Amazon. No sale, seems to be the regular price. However, in the bottle post it says recommended retail price is 15.54. I think for both, but what the heck. I found the acrylic paint for 6 euro in another shop, but the bottle post says recommended retail price is 3.39. So I don't know, I feel like something got mixed up here. However, I couldn't find the exact paper on the internet. It says 6 euro in the bottle post, 30 cents for the eyedropper and no price for the straw since it's probably only worth a fraction of a cent. So you do the math, but taking the experience I had into account, for me personally, it was worth the money. Let me know in the comments which painting you like most. I really don't know because they're so different. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more art videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!